wanted to talk about John Fogarty's piece about the advanced mark. You obviously uh, getting back into GA commentary mode this weekend, Dave. Um, I'm talking to Tommy earlier. He was saying he was watching some of the games from was it was it the 2013 All Ireland semi final and. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Dublin beat Kerry in that amazing game. That if there had been an advance mark that day, it would have stopped the play. It would have slowed it down. Some brilliant scores that were <coughs> affected that day wouldn't have happened. Somebody would have just taken the mark, taken their point, and the game would have generally evolved slowly into Aussie rules. <laughs> yeah, Tommy posted a 23-minute highlight linked on YouTube to that semi-final. I think was it yesterday or the day before, and I actually watched it last night. It, just to remind myself of what an extraordinary game that was. I'd have to speak to Tommy specifically about a couple of the examples he's referring to because the thing that struck me most was the freedom that Conor, Colin Cooper had at centre forward and the little bounce passes he was sending into the likes of James Donoghue and Donegal Walsh that led to the goal. So if the ball has obviously bounced before it's popped into the chest of the forward, I mean, the mark isn't an issue there. I think he, he, um, he talked about there was one point that, um, that Gooch scored where he makes the catch and then has two dummy solos and yeah. kicks it. But and he would have just, yeah. he he just taken the catch and kicked it over the bar and we would have missed the dummy solos and we would have missed the amazing bit of skill. Like, I still don't really understand what the point of the advance mark is. Yeah, um, in, in examples like that, Tommy's absolutely spot on. And there are going to be examples of certainly lesser forwards. I Part of me, maybe the romantic in me, believes that the likes of a Colin Cooper or a Conor Callaghan or David Clifford will still play the ball and will still try the dummy solo, even that is certainly not the pragmatic approach to take. But everybody else is likely to just take the mark, put the hand in the air, and they just pop over the easy ball from you know 13, 14 yards out. Um, you're probably you are going to lose some of it. I guess the thinking behind it was you want to reward high fielding within and, and around the goal mouth. And there were a couple of huge moments. I'm thinking of the Ulster final last year when Thomas Galligan pulled a brilliant ball. It wasn't even a high ball. He was almost falling over to his left under real pressure from a Donegal defender. And it was a huge score at the time in a huge moment of that game in the second half. And it helped Cavan on their way. And I, maybe in the mind's eye of the rules committee that were putting this in place, they have that sort of a delivery in their mind. The problem is, and it's the consequences of bringing any sort of a rule in. You maybe don't think of the knock-on effect. I consider the possibility of the ball being played 20 metres and it only goes a yard over the 45-metre line. It's a lateral ball. Now, why you would take the option of calling a mark there, I'm not quite sure because no one's going to stick it over from their hand really from 45 metres. Well, then, maybe David Clifford might, but outside of him, who's going to do that? Uh, my overall point there is I don't see it generally last year's championship in particular. It didn't have a material effect on the championship. I don't think the rule was required, and I think it needs to be looked at if or when it's brought up for discussion again. But I wouldn't be losing any sleep over it either. Well, now, the nightmare scenario that John Fogarty paints, sorry, Jerry, I keep going across you, is that the All Ireland is decided by a little ball that's played 20 metres to within 20, 20 metres inside the 45, and the play stops, and someone kicks the ball over the bar uncontested, unpressured, and therein is the result of the All Ireland. That is a bit of a nightmare, nightmare scenario for me. I think. <laughs> A couple of things, right? If, if everybody thought this was coming in and was here forever, then very quickly you would see managers and coaches designing set plays that were, that were aimed at getting uh, shooters marks in, a, in a, a fixed area, and it would completely change the game. It feels a little bit like we're a little bit pregnant at the moment, where coaches and managers are like, if you can take the mark, take the mark, but let's not program plays to specifically take account of the rule. Unless there is some team out there who is about to unfurl something in the championship this year and we're about to see a smash and grab where somebody starts kicking 10, 12 points for marks. And it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that, that that will happen. You would expect it won't because of COVID and restrictions and the lack of contact errors that people have had. So, um, but at the same time, I still can't understand what the point of it is. So somebody makes a great, like two or three times a year, somebody makes a great catch and they ultimately find it difficult to lay that ball off, right? We, we need to save those people. And in so doing, we completely alter the way that the game can be played, where those, those dinged balls in. Like if you've got somebody who is a good shooter, but not particularly mobile, all of a sudden they can be worth five or six points a game if they're just doing shuttle runs in a, in a D shape from 35 meters out. And that, there probably are plenty of people who can do that with no pressure on them. That's not, that's not a particularly amazing skill versus the two dummy solos from Gooch that are suddenly gone from the game.
It's an unlikely development, though. I mean, when is it a fa when is an attacking player winning the ball that close to goal without pressure on them? Um, the ball has to be perfect as well. It can't bounce into their chest. It has to be pinged into their chest from outside the 45. You know, it has to go at least the 20 metres. I think there's a reason why in the last 12 months we've seen this happen so seldom, two or three times a game. I, I really don't see a team working on it to the point where it becomes a significant weapon over the course of the next two months. I'd be very surprised if that happened. But it, it could become... You, you can see how the, the <clears throat> top quality coaches... Like, you're, you're talking about a 25-metre kick pass being a very important weapon. And if, like, I don't know, is that the game we want? Stop, pause. And the other thing is that everybody's taking about 45 seconds over it, and they're toe-tapping the ball, and they're bouncing the ball, and it's like, that's, that's completely legal. You're just not supposed to kick it. But everybody's taking, oh, it's a free kick now. I'm going to take this free kick. And I don't know. I just think that, like, what is the point of it? I don't really understand... The, the massive benefit that we're getting from this particular rule change. Well, Mickey Graham, he is the, the person you referenced there questioning whether some of these rules need to be maintained going into the championship. He was talking about the sin bin and there's other people talking about the advance march on Fogarty, as you said, mentioning this morning. From a Mickey Graham's point of view, I, I don't think he should be in the papers discussing whether or not a certain rule should be binned, pardon the pun, from the sin binning point of view for the championship. Like, having a bigger problems at the moment than whether or not one of these new rules is going to remain in place for the championship. They are in a serious hole going into this game with Tyrone on Saturday week. I, I'm on the commentary for that for Sky and um, a, a man with Calvin Roots, I'm not looking forward to it. I think it could be a very grim day for Calvin unless they somehow manage to pull something out of the bag on the back of a relegation as they have done in the previous two seasons. But um, overall, I think in an ideal world, if you were to reverse the clock, this mark would not have been brought in. But now that it's here, personally, I don't see a huge issue with it. But when it comes up for re-debate, I'd, I'd rather it was canned. Yeah, on that note, Dave, good stuff. Thanks for being with us today. Cheers. Thanks, Chair. Dave McIntyre, you can, as he said, hear him again this weekend on Comptry Duty for Clare against Kerry on Sky on Saturday evening.